Welcome back to the next in the series of the Back to Basic tutorials. Today we're looking at horizontal design. So I think it's design number six. We've worked our way through from the line arrangement right at the very beginning. And today we're looking at one example of a, of a horizontal design. So as the word says, a horizontal design that will go horizontally. You can have it flat on the table like the design we're doing today or you can have it raised up on a container, which takes a little bit more practice and a little bit more experience. But the type of design that we're doing today, the low down horizontal design, is very much like you would find in the center of a table or at a wedding reception or maybe on a top table. And is a really very popular design in floristry. Um, and it will be great at this time of year, as we lead up towards Christmas, for you to use as a table centre with maybe a candle in it. Um, or you could use it throughout the year to decorate a long or even a low table. So a long, maybe a coffee table. Now I'm using today just a third of a block of floral foam. That's been pre-soaked. And you can use... One of these larger plastic trays that we tend to use a lot in the floristry industry. Or if you're at home and you're a flower arranger, you might have a low down casserole dish or a saucer or a plate. Ideally something that's narrow. So if you have a sandwich tray or plastic dishes that you might have had a takeaway delivered in, that size container is, is ideal. I also have these smaller square type plastic dishes and that's great for the design that I'm going to do today. Now I find if I use the full width of the third of a piece of floral foam it's a little bit it makes the design a little bit too fat and if you think about your width of a dining room table sometimes if you're using that whole third of a brick it makes the design too wide and then there's no room for plates and crockery and cutlery and condiment sets and what have you. So I'm just going to narrow that down a little bit by taking some of the width off my foam. So just removing maybe um, just over a centimetre there from the floral foam and it gives me, that will give me less foam to cover and hopefully will prevent the design becoming too fat on the sides. And then I'm going to use the floral tape so pop tape or oasis tape to hold my piece of um, floral foam into place and I always stress, always remember to start your tape attached to a dry part of the container. If it's wet obviously the, the tape won't adhere and if you try to attach it to the floral foam on the top it won't stick because it'll be too wet. And take the tape all the way around and finish it on the top. That will prevent it from unraveling underneath, and particularly if you're placing it on a table. If you just stick the tape on either side, it will eventually unpeel and pull away. And that's your basic container and your mechanic sorted. So we refer to the word mechanics quite a lot in flower arranging and floristry, and in this case, it refers to my tape and my floral foam. Okay, so let's get started. Now you might see that I've already got some foliage pieces pre-cut and that's because I've already done this video once this morning and we had a little bit of a technical issue and it didn't record properly. So unfortunately, um, the pieces have, have already been cut short but I'll explain how to use them as we go along. Now the length of your arrangement you can really decide by the size of the table that it's going on or the um, environment that it's going to sit in. So if it's going into a large room, you can make the design a lot larger. But for your home table, so if you're a dining room table at home, I've probably gone about 10 inches in length. And what I've done, you can see here, I've pre-cut two pieces of foliage and this is um, Italian or sometimes called French ruscus. This is very much a very popular floristry foliage, very fine dark green foliage. I've cut my two pieces to the same length and that will ensure that your length of your arrangement will be equal on both sides. Let me just move these to one side. 
out of the way so you can see the shapes forming a little bit better. So if I use these two pieces that I've cut the same length on either side of my floral foam in the middle of the block, then that will gauge the length of my arrangement. And if I just hold that up for you, you can see that I'm very much low down on my plastic container. I haven't started my foliage up high, where you can see all the foam underneath from the plastic container. I've angled it down slightly, very close to that plastic container, so that the pieces of foliage are angled beautifully down the side, so that there's almost a seamless line from the arrangement itself down to the table and it hides all this ugly plastic container underneath. Now we've gauged the length of the arrangement, now we're going to do the width and the width is pretty much half of the length of the longest side piece. So I've already got a few pieces pre-cut. So if we think about roughly gauging where half of that longer piece would be, so there's a few pieces already cut. That then gives you a good proportion for the side. And when I pop these into position, and again, if you cut those two pieces to the same length before you start, you pretty much guarantee to have an equal width of your arrangement. And again, angle them down. And you can see there straight away, my outline shape is starting to take place. And if we have an imaginary line that runs from top to the edge, then it's almost creating a diamond effect from the overall outline shape. Okay, and then what we'll do next is we'll fill in in these sections here. So I quite often refer to this as a compass. If you think of this as being north, south, east and west, hopefully, because I'm looking at it backwards in the camera. If we position our next piece of foliage in this, which I think would be northeast as you're looking at it on the camera, um, we're going in between to create a pattern in our outline. So we've gone in between this section, now I need to come in this section. And again, if you pre-cut these pieces to the same length, then you will know that your overall shape front to back and from left to right will be fairly equal. And we'll continue in that manner just so that I've got the outline created. And you can see that because we started with a smaller piece of foam in the middle, my widths don't become too fat and too heavy. It's very much in proportion with the length. Now you could at this stage, if you were um, thinking about maybe putting a candle in the middle, you could attach a candle there into the centre before you overfill with too much foliage. And to bring a little bit of a contrast in against the very dark colouring of the Ruscus, I've got some of the grey leafed eucalyptus. And I'm going to almost repeat what I did with the original, with the first placements. I'm going to go back around the outside, sit in some foliage at a slightly different angle. So we're not covering the first placements, we're enhancing them and strengthening the outline that we created. Now quite often when I'm teaching this to young trainee florists, we quite often um, draw a diamond shape on the table underneath and that helps to keep within the shape when you're learning and when you're practicing. It helps you understand these very geometric shapes that we're looking at. So I'm still very much low down on the base of the floral foam and I'm radiating out my foliage from a centre point so it all looks like it's coming from one position within the foam. Now at this sort of stage of floristry there, and flower arranging as well, there are two main points of um, arranging your stems. Traditional work like this tends to be radial, a little bit like spokes of a wheel or rays of the sun, they all come to a centre point. 
and then there is parallel placements where they have their own point of entry out of the foam and the gap between each placement is pretty much the same and we haven't yet looked at any parallel placements we've only been doing some very traditional um, radial placements so if I just hold this up for you now you should hopefully be able to see a little bit of a diamond shape taking place and at this stage, I often encourage people to put it down on the floor and have a look at it from a, a greater height so that you can see the shape forming a lot more clearly. So that looks pretty good. And I'd also like to encourage everybody to turn their arrangement around and look at it from a different angle. And um, otherwise you unintentionally end up with a front facing, with a slight front facing design, although this design should be the same from the front and from the back. So if your Auntie Margaret is sitting this side of the arrangement, she needs to have something interesting to look at. The same as your um, Uncle Fred, who's on this side of the table, he would like to see something interesting as well. So now we've created that outline shape, then we need to come up more towards the middle, give the arrangement some height there in the middle and a profile. And to gauge your height, <coughs> excuse me, you need to um, use your shorter width of the arrangement to gauge your height and your height of the arrangement is the same or a little bit shorter than your width and this makes it nicely proportioned and then this then will gauge my height and I can radiate my pieces of foliage out from the centre giving a little bit of contrast with the two colour foliages as we go along. Now as a commercial florist I'm quite lucky because I obviously have a selection of foliages that I can use for, the, 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 for arranging and each time I do a video. Um, if you're struggling on foliage um, and you want to look for something in the garden or maybe if you're out for a walk somewhere Foliage is that I refer to as flat, so nothing that's too thick and too bushy because it tends to create a very busy and very full design and you don't get a lot of interest between the contrasts of the foliage. So this is what I often refer to as flat foliages and then for other types of designs we look for something that's more filling and a lot more bushy. So bushy foliages are things like Hebe, Pittosporum um, and because this design is quite small we need to think about the scale of the flowers that we, flowers and the foliage that we use. So it's a small design and then I need to think about choosing small foliages for it. If you were doing this for a grand hotel or a large stately home and the environment and the furniture was much larger then you could use much bigger foliages but for today to keep it in scale with the final position of the design we need to pick and choose small pieces of foliage so hopefully now we have um, almost a diamond shaped forming and if i think about using so i've bought um just a stem alongside if i sort of highlight the outline you will hopefully see that this imaginary line that runs from the width to the length creates my outline shape and if I hold it up this way I've got a lovely profile and height there in the centre graduating away towards my edge and you know if you want to be a little bit more precise you can go back along and check your outline shape using a, just a stick or a ruler but it's just a gauge obviously flower arranging and floristry is an art form and we don't need the arrangements to be too stiff and too severe okay so we've created a beautiful outline shape now we're going to start filling in with some flowers and I'm really going to repeat the same pattern as that I created with the foliage so with the spray carnation so these are a really good um, example of a flower that can be used in this style of arranging. They are really good value for money. You can split them down as, as you can see I've done here. 
they're easily available whether it's from your local florist or from a, um, sorry, a supermarket and they last for a long time they're quite strong flowers so when you're practicing it's a really good one to use because they don't mind being pulled in and out of the floral foam and again like i did at the very beginning when i cut two pieces of foliage that were the same length i've done the same with my spray carnations and i've tried to find ones that are fairly similar within the overall pack of the spray carnations and then these will sit just on top of that foliage outline that I've already created there. The foliage is always the longest part and then the flower will sit nicely on top, she says, so that we have an outline being strengthened with the flower material as well as the foliage. Now you can again gauge your width using two pieces of uh, spray carnation that are cut to the same size and again I'm down low on the floral foam I haven't come up yet towards the top and if I hold that up again you'll see that we're back to that north south east and west position and then I lock them to fill in in between each of those gaps now please remember that this this is a little bit like arranging you know it's a bit like painting by numbers i'm just showing you a very simple way of, of creating a table arrangement or a horizontal design um, and this is only one way of making this type of arrangement and it will of course vary depending on the the flower choice that you have and the flowers that you've been able to get hold of but quite often when you're learning it's good to, it's a bit like a recipe isn't it it's good to have step-by-step -step instructions from start to finish and then when you become a little bit more confident you can maybe cut out a little bit of the recipe and you can play around a little bit more with the flowers but if i hold that up you will see that we have um, our length and then our width and then we have some flowers in between so that we have a connection between all the flowers on the outside now if we look at it as it is now the very dominant section of the arrangement is around the outside so it creates almost a white very strong line around the outside so we need now to bring that color up through the middle and today for today's arrangement i've picked all white and I think when you're learning, and I've probably said this before in other videos, I think it's easier to arrange using one or two very soft, subtle colours because it's easier to spread out the colour balance between the arrangement. When you're learning, it's very, very hard to... Um, choose flowers that are going to work well together when you put them into the arrangement. They might look gorgeous together in a little bunch, but the minute you split and separate the flowers, the colour combinations um, often look quite different. And for example, I have some lovely yellow Alstroemeria here in the shop. But if I use the Alstroemeria in there, I have a huge amount of white but not a great deal of the yellow. So the yellow becomes almost like a blob in the centre. I would need some yellow to link through to the outside. So for today, we just stick with the white. And I bought a little bit of that white up through to the centre now, so we have a far even, a, sorry, a more better, oh, that didn't make any sense at all, a far better distribution of the white colour combination within the design and if I just turn it around you'll see that we've still got quite a bit of floral foam cover to cover but we've got a great shape forming and if I use that stick again if I show you the profile I'm pretty much within that overall profile and I haven't exceeded the width and the length of the arrangement. Okay, now to bring a little bit of um, a more dominant section to the middle, so what we would refer to as a focal point. 
and I'm going to bring a more dominant larger flower towards the center and um, the Alstroemeria is a flower that I often don't encourage people to use when they're learning because if you cut the individual bracts off the little individual stems they become quite soft and quite weak so they're great in contemporary work if you're using little plastic vials or you have test tubes but they're quite often quite frustrating to arrange with because they, they crush very easily and they disintegrate so for the Alstroemeria I, when you're learning try and think about a design that you would create where you use the whole stem to in the arrangement you don't cut it down small um, for a grand design you know a large pedestal or a large table arrangement that would be superb because it has a much bigger form to it but what I've done with mine is I've cut them down a little bit shorter so that they will be fine for my focal point and I have thinned out a few of the heads and I can use those in another design so I don't have such a huge concentration there of flower heads and I'm going to bring these towards the focal point so we have a little bit of a larger flower there for my focal area So I think today we're only going to use the two. Now if I use the yellow again as an example, I've tried to encourage you to have the small buds towards the outside because it makes it a much more pleasing design. Your eye travels from the smaller flowers in towards the centre to where the larger focal point is. And often when people are learning, they tend to put these big flowers on the outside and what that does is it creates a very dominant area in this section rather than the focal point there in the centre. So always remember, big flowers towards the centre, small flowers towards the outer edge. And I often equate that to your body. You come from your hand, which is smaller, you get bigger and bigger and bigger until you come to the torso in the middle, which is the bigger area. And... If you want to practice and you want to become a little bit more confident using the Alstroemeria, then you can use them towards the edge to um, bring the colour of that Alstroemeria, or the texture I should say, of that Alstroemeria towards the outside. We just cut one short little piece off for this side. But you have to be really very careful and very gentle and hold the Alstroemeria down low when you're inserting it into the foam. Now we'll just pop these two in. Now another flower that's fantastic for this type of arrangement where you need to have long stems is the Lysianthus or the Eustoma. And this is actually one stem, this was one large stem. The florist's choice of Lysianthus tends to be much bigger than the supermarket ones, but they are now easily available at the supermarket. So this is another one that's great to break down and use in smaller sections. And I'll follow on in that original pattern that I did. Start with flowers towards the outer edge, towards my outline, strengthen the length of the design and again try and use the buds towards the outside of the arrangement and the larger pieces towards the centre. So we've got a couple of these nice long ones and again they're cut to the same length so I know that if I place one on the right side of the design it's going to be the same length on the left side. And when you become a little bit more confident in what you're doing, you'll do this by eye. You won't need to think about comparing and measuring the pieces. It will come much more freely and um, much more naturally. So we have a couple more of the open flower heads. So these would be better used towards the focal area. And then one thing I haven't mentioned a great deal in this video today is recession and that's the use of flowers down low in the design 
that helps to create depth and gives a much more pleasing effect to the arrangement. So what I've done there is I've just lowered one piece down, make sure I travel downwards and give the design depth and also prevents the design looking quite static. And when you're learning, often people try to put all their flowers in exactly the same position in the arrangement, like this type of effect. And it becomes very stiff. You need to have movement, you need to have flowers up and down within the design. So I think we're pretty much done. Don't know whether we need any more flowers in there. But there we are, that's a very sort of basic horizontal design. Would look gorgeous in the middle of a dining table. A very simple all white colour combination so that um, it's easier to arrange and less confusing when you're learning. And I hope you've enjoyed that win. So next week we're going to be looking at a diagonal arrangement. For me as a florist it's a design that we don't use a great deal at the moment but it's a very interesting one to learn. So if you've been enjoying the videos, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for a notification when a new video is uploaded, and please leave us a comment or a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, and remember that these are very basic designs. There are a whole host of horizontal designs that you can make in different styles, using different color combinations and different flowers but this is a really good starting point for you. So next week, we'll see you for a diagonal arrangement. Bye for now.